Hey everybody here, this is Get Me Greek. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be reacting to 25 Enlightening Secret and Elden Ring trending on YouTube lately. Hey, don't don't click off. Just stay with me. This is gonna be interesting. Done. We're gonna watch it together and see what my thoughts on it. And where are your thoughts? Just let me know in the comment section below after you watch this. For some reason I thought this was sexy if I went. Ew. In Swarm number one. That this can happen. What's going on here, guys? This grab attack did 2,410 damage to our character. We actually had to hack our health higher just to survive it. So oh. this might just be the single most devastating grab attack in any From Software game, I think. Dang. But what's really fascinating? Well, about this that's Elden Ring or Dark Soul we're talking about here, guys. That you can fight I mean, that boss is a little bit tricky, but if you have like a, um, you know, War Ash, where you got a duplicate version of yourself, that can be very handful to help you. Only the Stars of Darkness variant of Astel can clone itself and use this attack. The other one can't. I wonder why. There's definitely more to these creatures than meets the eye. Really? It's that same eye that brings us to the Falling Star Beast. So two of these can be found. Yes, I call a, a pit bull because it, lo it looks like one, you know. A full -grown falling star it wasn't much an issue. I mean, if you're buying one on one, yeah, it's going to be real pain in the butt. But again, if you have a duplicate version, you know, Ash working with you, then your life will be easy. Of the falling star beast looks a lot like the mouthpiece that many antlion larvae have. And basically yeah. immature insects. They're bound to go through a pupa or chrysalis stage before they become an adult. Which brings us to the malformed star enemies. Oh, is so there is an evolution. So the Just like Pokemon. Of animal, and in its place is this hidden, contorted monstrosity which hangs stationary, as many bugs commonly do in this stage. Here, the beast is much larger and sports multiple limbs. Finally, the skull that You know, I saw that location one time and I couldn't reach to it because he was attacking me from far range distance and I was like, oh crap, I gotta take cover. Just like that. You know, a terribly attack. Sprouting wings, it now fights you with an enormous tail, new attacks, and six fully realized limbs. Number three. Around the lands between stand several rises, and to enter these, you're often required to solve. Yes, I did run into those, and on your own, each of them has their own puzzle, like he said. And hey, there's no shame if you can't figure out. You just go on YouTube. That's what 99% of the player on Elden does. And a glintstone crown helmet, both of which are within the Raya Lucaria Academy. And the combination of wearing the crown and I did the not see that one. The, the witch crown. I, I gotta get back to it. To glow Been a while since I played the game. The way through the seal, showing just how clever you are. But what I really want to yeah. know is who the hell was the first one to figure this one out? Without yeah, knowing. seriously. Next, I want to show off some invisible. I mean, probably some guy just picked up a helmet and he just stood there. Players. For our so, luck and coincidence, he was like, oh my god, the door opened up! Yet another rise this one, the heretical you have to go in the mountaintop of across the chasm to the other side, the and the <laughs> like, like what he's saying, you just walk right across the invisible bridge. Power. Who knew? Carefully follow this path Who freaking knew? Inside. Being inside by these means will break the seal by the traditional entrance as you defend yourself from the avionette soldiers inside. Your reward at the top is the powerful founding reign of stars. The rewards can be very useful if you know how to use the perks. Hey, if you got your skill stats wrong, you can use your larvae tears and just use rebirth, and you can readjust your stats. Well, look at that. Another one. This alcove. Carefully navigate across the abyss to find some vulgar militants. Who Ooh, the guy scratched my back. From this exit, Sorry guys, I've been thinking about it for like a few minutes. Oh, that was worth it. Being slightly lower than the current level. Walk a straight line here, being wary of the small... Look at this, this is crazy! Inside. Here you'll find more enemies, more loot, and a path that leads on to a stray mimic tier boss. The traditional way we've always revealed these paths is with rainbows. No, that's a secret I did not know. Gotta check that one out too. 
The we have it. Has given us yet another valuable tool. Mimit tier, that's what I was trying to say earlier. Mimit tier is the best tier that you can use. Beside the uh, headless knight who can teleport and dodge attack very often. And speaking of which, when it comes to falling, Elden Ring appears to have a system in place to help prevent unintentional uh, so when you're faced with a sheer drop. Like Especially this, if you have the cat ring, will be met it will definitely reduce a lot of damage when you take a fall. From falling. These barriers seem to exist in places where there are large, unbroken falls beneath you, making them really useful when you're navigating those invisible paths discussed earlier. Just swing away and take note of when you seem to stop moving, as you've likely reached the edge. That being said, This method doesn't work for all cliff faces. Beware of using this method against What's really this? choppy ledges that don't have a clearly defined fall below <gasps> like this one here. It's wow! No, look at that. No. Just imagine falling off the highest mountain. Like Would that work? I don't know. Let's see. see. Here. Speaking of dropping down, did you know that there are several branches and ledges that you can navigate behind the bestial sanctum? In no, I did not. Risking some really long drops down here will reward your tenacity. Oh my god. Dragon Crest, Shield Talisman, yes. and the Cincadia. The Talisman will provide a nice boost to physical damage negation. However, the true diamond in the rough is the dagger nearby. Modeled after an Italian I gotta get it. The same name I the have to get it. Means five fingers. I have a lot of items, but dude, you're, you're telling me a lot of secrets I don't know about. But Elden Ring takes this I usually use the River of Blood katana as a dual set, and I do Blood Loss stat build up. Hey, you know what I'm talking about? Google on YouTube. What's this? Five fingers. Which adds another 10% boost. You can Ooh. even two hand the claw mark seals and make better use of its unique strength scaling. And the best way to maximize your damage in Elden Ring is. Numbers don't lie, but there's my B. Match proper weapon scaling. And of course, everyone knows that the assigned letters of S through to E determine how strong your scaling damage will be. Yes. But it's actually not as simple as that because take a look at this short sword and compare it to I knew there was a low. I, I couldn't tell if there was a glitch, it was an error, but listen to what he's about to say. So they should scale identically, right? Then why is it that the Lord Sworn straight sword comes up as a red, poorer quality letter when compared? In the user interface, Ooh, it turns out that these letter allocations are actually only breakpoints or tiers, and that each weapon actually has a hidden scaling figure or value of zero through to two hundred. So, in this example here, the short sword actually has a stronger scaling value when compared to the Lord Sworn sword, even though it's how you play Call of Duty. The gun that you get when you start multiplayer is actually better than the gun that you have to unlock at level 80. Another thing that you'll want to be aware of Same game. if you've been playing Elden Ring for a really long time is soap. It can be really useful <laughs> in certain situations. Uh, I need to so stop here my computer. Gotta get a new desk, man. A little cramped here. character will be physically coated in the element and status buildup will increase. Because you're covered, this buildup will continue even after you exit the pool. Now, this coating will eventually wear off, but soap can remove it instantly. Soap will also Bro. remove any blood stains that you've managed to gather. I, I better find the soap. And similar to soap, if you roll through a poison pool, there are Call of Duty fan, under or rest in peace, soap. Rain, then the poison will come off as well. This effect is immediate, so if the pool is outside in the rain, then you'll find that coating can never occur. Uh, uh, rain affair. I like that all the rain. I can't believe I never knew that. Oh, uh, interesting details. Rotten pot. yourself by rolling into scarlet rot, and then scarlet you exit rot. the swamp. What's this? You let the scarlet rot status fully build up based on the body coating. For some strange reason, this body coating will trigger a less deadly version of the rot than if you had just stayed in the pool to activate it. It appears to take about 50% less health per tick if you do it this way. So if you're crossing this enormous lake of rot... You can see I'm not talking right now because I'm actually super shocked the pool, by this. You can just have this weaker version applied to you. 
for your entire journey across. Next, there are also two types of poison in Elden Ring. There's oh, yeah? and Deadly. Deadly deals twice as much damage per second when active, and it does this over a shorter period of time as well, which is also beneficial. Ooh, where were you live? I'm actually interested in this video, it's so good. Actually deal this deadly poison I promise, making them it's really good. Superior, in my opinion, to regular poison infusions as far as DPS goes. So pick your poison carefully. For number 12, consider the nomadic merchants. As well as being valuable allies and skilled information brokers, many are also very talented musicians. And thanks to Sekiro Dubi, Yeah, I was on the first journey, and I didn't feel like traveling to them just to buy specific things, so I just killed them all and gave the bells to the, you know, handmaidens, so I can ask it to the shop closer to my round table, safe location. Prepare to cry, by the way, but staying with these merchants a little longer, their wares the are also very unique. Uh, alongside the arrows and the pots that they Oof. cut, they also sell information in the form of cookbooks and notes. But did you know that these notes are actually marked to help identify which merchant they came from? Take a look at Merchant Kale, for example. See those Merchant Kale. Scented feathers in his cap. You'll also find those on the bottom of the notes that he sells. Oh, uh, basically a signature flower. That is cool. Their original author. For number fourteen, here is a. That's one of the things I love about Odin and Dark Souls. There's so many things that you don't know about the game. And it's like endless of surprises. I just love it. All you have to do is find your way to the No DOC, no micro transaction, BS, just a pure cinematic game. Normal sounds will just continue to operate. Uh, yeah, I, I actually I knew that you can pause that. If you have a switch, I did it again. Sorry. If you have a switch version playing Dark Souls Remaster, and you can't pause the game, you just press the house button and the game will pause. I promise you, it actually worked. I was really surprised. Next, here's a secret that was discovered all the way back in the network test. Thanks to early research completed by Lance McDonald. So at 2 a.m. in the morning, the tired. In other locations, rather than just the typical gatefront graces that most people use. As long as it's your third side of grace, most graces in Limgrave will actually trigger this cutscene. My favorite one to go to is actually the Seaside Ruins. I think that one looks cool. But there's also Seaside Ruins. South, uh, the take notes, America, folks. The go Gorgeous take Sacrifice, notes. The Murkwater Coast. They all work perfectly. One new addition to Elden Ring that you might not know about is your ability to block while backstepping. With this, I didn't knew that. A little bit of protection. But when you fire a boss, if it did take a step back, not only it consumes a lot of stamina, but you'll never expect a secondary and third attack coming right at you real quick. And while back steps admittedly aren't super powerful, the attack that you do after a back step can be. These attacks are similar to your running attack animation. One step backwards, two attacks for forward. Weapons, the backstep attack animation is particularly good. For example, <laughs> like I said, I have a dual set of blood river katana. It just goes straight for it and goes. And power stands just chop it up like a little bitches. Consecutive thrust. But um, when you do invasions against other real life player Elden Ring, while they're sometimes useful, I know a lot of guys jump back and pierce forward, where they really shine is in pvp here high level players often use backstep attacks to yep. mix up their animations and the best players yep. can be seen backstepping i know that just to trigger this attack sometimes so if you're not using these in pvp especially you really should weave them into your play style many people i should really don't know what shame on me when you pull off this technique and speaking of invading so you can invade with the finger items but yeah, this is where I'm a little bit confused. During your playthrough, then you can actually use them both to invade more efficiently. Using one finger. I know the again. The pressure you have beyond count for me. Regularly pops up, but one thing I noticed from watching Ouroboros streams is that by alternating between two fingers constantly, you effectively reset your attempt to invade, meaning you're more likely to invade a player as soon as an invasion slot opens up. And despite being used for the same purpose, oh, look at that. A glitch in the network. Are actually slightly different. Um, this is mostly a case of thematics, 
as the fingers represent two different factions, uh, one for the recusants of the Volcano Manor and another one for the followers of Moog, the Lord of Blood. But did you notice the Lord of Blood invasion music? That was a hard boss. But that was a really cool location. I actually I made a video. You can check them out. YouTube channel. If you want to farm what was it? Two million bulls. Yeah, check it out. That's really cool armor. I like it well with the shield. Elden Ring is full of little things Scabards. into its world, and being able to sheathe your weapons is one of those. Yes, this is a very minor thing, but it does make you look a little bit more presentable in cutscenes or when oh, talking yeah. to NPCs. And if you're someone who records footage like me, then this is a very handy tool. So to sheathe your sword, you need to ensure that your offhand is empty, and then you tap triangle and L1 to stash your blade. <laughs> I yawned again. At your side or over your shoulder, but some swords have these beautiful scabbards that really yes, are they worth do. showing off. The glint stone, Chris. <laughs> Where are you finding all these swords, sword, dude? The I mean, I got the grafted great sword and star courage, dual great sword. So. You should always be conscious of your character's Elden Bling, because you never know whose world your character will end The Jar of Warriors. Remember those random NPC characters that you fought during Fear's questline? Yeah, the and you get the talisman where it will jar. increase your well, equip load significantly. It helped me a lot early in the worlds, game and for there must be big heavy swords. That the game is actually choosing from. Matt Gruen on Twitter has revealed some of the incredible workings behind this system. For example, if you're online while getting <coughs> hugged by fear, then your character's build is allegedly being uploaded to the Elden Ring servers, and apparently these saved builds are then... So I'm giving away my the deep root privacy information your character to the internet. As fear's champion in another place <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's cool. But hey, at least it's not Facebook. Shame on you, Mark. Your character can then appear as a knight of the great jar in a different player's world. But even if your character is uploaded, Matt points out that it doesn't mean your build. I know I'm not talking a lot in this video. I'm, I'm trying to listen because this is all shock to me. I watched plenty of videos in the past about Elden Ring secrets and areas that I haven't explored. For example, walking across the invisible bridge to tower. But this video, it's um, it's catching me off guard. Good time. Next. You'll have noticed that ruins are a pretty common sight on your journey through the lands between. <laughs> Thing is, these always seem to have underground areas with treasures or bosses or two bosses. But while most ruins have obvious entrances to their underground, others conceal them with planks or even magic. So if you find a ruin without an underground area, try your best to look for an illusory <laughs> floor. An easy way to spot them is by looking for a rectangle that doesn't quite blend in, <laughs> as you can see here. Uh, you can also use the incantation. How do you see that, sir? Which reveals mimicry. But an even better version is the omen shackle items, which are kind of bugged Bro. and have a huge hitbox that can trigger. How do you know all of this? This this is insane. Twenty three. There have been some quality of life updates added in recent patches as well that are proving pretty helpful in their own small ways. A really useful one is this small glowing icon that now appears at the site of grace menu. It indicates that you have flask upgrades on hand, so now you know exactly when you have enough sacred tears or golden seeds to craft and upgrade with. For number 24, alongside the flask update, gain a certain amount of rooms. Runes, now yes, like I said, many check out my video. It's like one of the very, very first video on my YouTube channel. You can gather 2 million runes in one hour. I promise you, watch the video. You'll be very shocked. As far as updates go, though, Radan might be the boss. Conqueror the Conqueror. The most. I came, I saw, I conquer. conquer of stars is hey, I'm Greek. Been there before. There is another way you can approach this fight that will make it a little less difficult. So this video from Limit Breakers shows that you can actually fully defeat Radan just by using NPC summons. Limit Breakers found really? 10 banners in the boss arena and that each one has a collection of summon signs beneath it that never changes. 
In total, there are 41 summon signs, but each one can only be used once. Limit Breaker's helpful graphic really breaks it all down. You should go and watch his video. But basically, Blythe can be summoned six times, as can Lionel, Trigoth, and Jeren. Although Jeren only appears in phase two, which I found interesting because it's basically like he's only joining in on the fight when he knows Radan is probably going to die. Uh, Okina and hey, Jeren I don't blame you. Just gotta play cautious, man. Five times. Alexander, don't want to celebrate a festival times. and die. Hatches can be summoned That'll be four terrible. Times, though he kind of just pieces out immediately if you do summon him, which is hilarious. Uh, but even without patches, that's 37 fighters, which is basically an army. And while it does take them a while to chip away at Radan's health, you can also use buffs like the commander's standard to help them out. In the end, the summons can do quite a number on the big gun. Where are you buying all these spells, dude? This is so cool. Ready for quite a long battle. Uh, in fact, while you're riding around, can you imagine the finding battle, a boss that fast? Why not listen to some more Cite the Abyss Watcher from Dark Souls 3. <laughs> Great. All right, that's it. That's it. All right. Woo! Well, there you go. 25 Enlightened Secret from Elder Ring. I've learned a lot today compared <laughs> over the last few months because I feel like I'm traveling all over the place. But who knew? There are so many invisible bridge and invisible drop down and glitch and woo! Elden Ring guys, game of the year. I, I hope they definitely deserve it big time for sure. Well, if you want to see me play Elden Ring or make some Elden Ring content video, just let me know in the future. Just leave it in the comment section below. I'll be very, very happy to meet them. But yeah, it's been a long day. I gotta go to bed and take a night-night. Alright, well, this is Gimpy Greek, and this is my channel. I'll see you guys later.